Hi, Steve here from Post Processing Mastery. And in this video, I'm giving you three advanced layer masking tips that will help you create better looking photos in Photoshop. So these are techniques that I use in every single image of my own. And I've taught these same techniques to thousands of photographers like you in my Luminosity Masking Mastery course. So if you're not using luminosity masks in your Photoshop workflow yet, or even if you're a seasoned expert, then watch this video all the way to the end because I'm showing you these three techniques that all build on each other. And when put together, they're going to give you the power to create better, higher quality layer masks. And therefore, as a result, better quality photos, which is what we all want. So with that said, let's get started. Tip number one is that you can brush through selections into layer masks to restrict your brush strokes to within that selection. So let's say, for example, we're going to add a curves adjustment and we want to use this curves adjustment to darken a part of this image. Let's not worry about which part at the moment. Then you would add the curves adjustment, click and drag the curve down to darken the whole image and then click on the layer mask and on the keyboard on a Mac, press command I or on a PC control I and that inverts the layer mask, turning it black, therefore concealing this curves one adjustment from the image. And then we can grab a regular brush. So this is just a normal way uh, without using any selections uh, of masking this effect in. So you would grab a brush, a white foreground, and just for the sake of this example, let's use 100% opacity. And then wherever we brush with this white brush into the image, that's going to mask this effect in to the scene. And we can see here the layer mask has been updated. We've painted that white bit through the middle there and that's revealing this darkening effect. So if I just undo this white brush stroke now, the benefit of brushing through a selection is that we can restrict where our brush stroke goes. So just for the sake of example, again, we'll get on to tips two and three shortly that take this kind of a few steps uh, beyond this basic example. Um, so let's say that I've drawn this square uh, selection then I go back to the brush tool and with this white brush I'm just going to brush all around this uh, this square and you can see that what's happening even though I'm brushing over the lines of the selection it's only having any kind of effect within the bounds of that selection. So it's basically drawing a perfect straight line, uh, you know, straight edged rectangle into the layer mask. So again, just disabling the layer mask and re-enabling it, we can see the effect that this has had of masking this in via a square selection. So you might be asking, what's the use of this? Well, so far, this has just been to demonstrate the concept because let me just deselect for a second and get rid of that mask. Um, so this is really just to demonstrate the concept. Where this becomes really useful is when the selection actually kind of helps you restrict the brush strokes to areas within the image based on what's actually in the image. So for example, if we wanted to darken the sky, we could grab the uh, quick selection tool and because this mountain edge is, uh, is a pretty clean edge, I think Photoshop's going to do a decent job of creating a selection around the edge of that mountain there. And then again, if we grab the white brush, then it doesn't matter what I do over the edge of this uh, selection. The brush stroke is only going to affect the sky. And we can see that has, uh, well, that's definitely been the case there. So. Um, you know, without this selection, what would have happened if I just deselect? What would have happened is that I'm going over the edges and just darkening the tops of those mountains due to the inaccurate brush stroke that is kind of unable to get perfectly up to the edge of the tops of the mountains there. So that's one, uh, that's kind of like the next level or the, you know, the first level of brushing through a selection into a layer mask. Where this gets really uh, really kind of stepping into the advanced territory is with tip number two. So that is coming up right now. And tip number two is that you can create selections based on the brightness of the pixels in the image and then brush through those selections into the layer mask. And what you're creating there is your very first luminosity mask, if that is uh, something you haven't done before. 
And luminosity masking really is a, it's an advanced technique, but it's one that I really think that every landscape photographer should have in their uh, toolkit because it's such a powerful tool for helping you get the best out of your images and making perfect selections. So I'll just show you what that looks like now. So let's say that we want to uh, darken this bright part of the sky here, just behind these dark mountains. So the way that we create the selection is we come to the channels panel and then on the keyboard we hold command on a Mac or control on a PC and click on the RGB channel once. And that's actually loaded a selection that is based on the brightness of all the pixels in the image. And it's essentially selecting the light half of the histogram. So let me show you what that looks like as a visual representation, just to kind of help you uh, kind of see and help you visualize when you're doing this for yourself, what pixels are gonna be selected. And I can do that by hitting this icon down in the bottom right corner, save selection as channel. And when I do that, we get this alpha one channel appear. Now, if I click on this, then it's gonna show us basically a black and white version of the image. What makes this useful is that it's kind of showing you what parts of the image are gonna be selected. Because in the previous example, where we had just that rectangular marquee, that's like a, a two dimensional selection, just you know on the X and the Y axis, it can actually help to think of luminosity selections as like a 3D like a three-dimensional selection. So rather than just drawing squares or, or rectangles or shapes within the image, it's got depth to it as well. Now, what I mean by that is that what we're looking at is a selection where the brighter pixels in this view, the more that area is being selected and included in the selection, and the darker the pixels, the less of that is gonna be included in the selection. So if we use this selection, to brush through into that uh, curves adjustment that we added a minute ago, then the brush stroke is going to have more effect in the areas of the image where it's brighter in this view that we're looking at. So let me show you what that looks like in practice. I'll just click back on the RGB channel. This selection is still active. I'll click on the layers panel, click on the curves adjustment, uh, layer mask. I've still got that white brush selected. And now if I just draw with this brush in this area here, we can see that those brighter parts of the sky are going a darker yellow. They're taking on the effect of this curves adjustment. But even though I am brushing over the edge um, of this mountain, it's not really uh, darkening it at all. And that is because the selection is restricting the brush stroke to the brightest parts of that sky there. So just to recap that quickly, let me start again. Uh, I'll deselect the selection and I'll just clear the layer mask from the uh, curves adjustment there. And so to repeat that process quickly, what you would do is come to the channels panel, hold the command or control key on the keyboard, click on the RGB channel once, and you'll know that this is a selection that's isolating the highlights in the image. Now, if you want to have a look at it to just kind of see what that looks like, then you can save it as an alpha channel, but you don't need to um, if you don't want. If you're sort of just happy that you know that this selection is going to be good, then you can just come straight back into the layers panel with the selection active, get your white brush, brush into the layer mask, and you'll know that the uh, selection is restricting the brush to those lighter areas. And we can see there in the layer mask, it's kind of going around the shape of the top of the mountain there. So that's great, but what about if we want to isolate our brush stroke to the shadows in the image? Well, that's where you actually have to do one extra step. So let me just reset this again. So Command D, deselect, just get rid of this curves uh, layer mask and back into the channels panel. Now, let me just clear this alpha one channel just so that we can start from scratch. Now, if you wanna create a selection that isolates the shadows in the image, then again, we come to the channels panel, command or control click on the RGB channel. And now this time we do need to save it as a channel. So there we've got the alpha one channel has been created. We click on it once, deselect our active selection with command or control D on the keyboard. And now because this 
Alpha 1 channel is showing us all of the lighter parts in, in the image are appearing lighter in the Alpha channel and therefore they're going to be included in the selection. We need to essentially reverse this so that the darker parts of the image appear brighter in this Alpha channel. And the easy way that we do that is on the keyboard, just press Command or Control and I to invert the, uh, the channel. And there we can see now the majority of the image is quite a light grey. Uh, the mountains here are the darkest part of the image, so therefore they are the brightest part in this Alpha channel. And the brightest part of the sky there is the darkest part of the channel. So now if we uh, load this as a selection, uh, which we can do by pressing Command or Control on the keyboard and clicking on the Alpha channel, then we come across into the RGB channel, uh, sorry, we click on the RGB channel, then come across back into the Layers panel and click on the Adjustment Layers uh, layer mask. Still got the white brush active. Now, if I just brush along the edge of this mountain here, then the inverse of what was just happening a second ago is going to happen this time. And that is the brush stroke has been restricted to within the shadows of the image. So I'm brushing along here along the edge. The sky isn't getting any darker. But the mountains are because that's what the brush uh, has been restricted to thanks to this selection. So that's tip number two, which was that you can create selections based on the brightness of the image and brush through those selections to restrict your brush strokes to the lighter or darker parts of your image. And this essentially is the essence of luminosity masking. Building on from tips one and two, uh, tip number three is going to help you take this all to the next level. And tip number three is that you can intersect selections that you've created in the channels panel to go deeper into the shadows or deeper into the highlights. So let me just reset this selection again and I'll show you exactly what that means. So returning to the channels panel and let's have a look back at this alpha one channel that we created a second ago in tip number two. If we load this channel as a selection, it's going to give us a selection that is isolating brush strokes to the brightest parts of this channel, which happen to be the darkest parts of the uh, of the image. Now, the problem with what we're looking at here is that most of this view is actually very light gray or almost white. And so most of the image is actually going to be selected. It's only these little bits just behind the mountains that are really being excluded from the selection. And the reason for this is because the image is actually quite a dark image. So if we want to restrict our brush strokes to even deeper into the shadows, so let's say we wanted to kind of create a selection that isolated these mountains and exclude the whole sky, then what we can do to achieve that is as follows. So first we need to load the Alpha 1 channel as a selection, so I'll hold on the keyboard Command or Control, click on Alpha 1. So that's loaded this as a selection now. Now to intersect this Alpha 1 channel with itself, now don't worry about the terminology too much. Uh, you know, If you just follow the steps and can repeat these steps, then it'll work just fine. Um, what you need to do to intersect this channel with itself is on the keyboard, on a Mac, hold Command, Option, Shift. Or on a PC, that's Control, Alt, and Shift. And then click on the Alpha 1 channel again. So we'll see that the uh, selection has kind of shifted there in the main window. And so that's telling us that we've got a new selection that's been, um, that's been activated. So let's now save this as an alpha channel and have a look at what it is actually going to select for us. So hitting that so save selection as channel button, we now have alpha 2. So I'll click on that and we can see there that the sky, the, the clouds in the sky there have got a fair bit darker and the contrast if we compare alpha 1 and alpha 2 the difference between the brightness in the mountains and in the sky is actually more than in alpha 1 so that's basically telling us that we've isolated those mountains even more now let's take that one step further and intersect it again with itself with the alpha 2 channel so command option shift on a mac or control alt shift and let's click on alpha 2 
And now let's save this new selection again as another channel. We can see Alpha 3 has been created. And now here, what this is showing us, most of the sky has gone black, uh, especially around the edges of the mountains. Yet the mountains themselves are still um, considerably brighter than that dark black of the sky. Uh, it's not as bright a white as before, but that doesn't really matter. As long as there's good contrast between the two things that you're trying to uh, restrict your brush strokes between. So let's have a look at uh, using this as a selection to brush through into that curves adjustment again. Uh, so click on the RGB channel, cross into layers. Uh, let's actually change this to a, a brightening curve. So I'm just going to double click that and move the curve up. So it's brightening rather than darkening now. Let's close that and click on the curves one adjustment layer uh, layer mask. And another tip uh, that you can do like so these marching ants, they're actually getting in the way. So it's going to sort of restrict us from seeing exactly what we're doing. So you can press on the keyboard command or control and H to hide the marching ants. So the selection is still active, but it's just the marching ants have been hidden. So let's take this uh, white brush into the layer mask and I'm going to brush purposefully over the edge. So half of the brush is in the sky and half is in the uh, mountain. And let's see what happens. And we can see there the top of the uh, top of the mountain there is getting considerably brighter, but the sky is not. And that is all thanks to that luminosity selection that is still active. If I press command H or control H, we can bring the marching ants back and we can see the selection is still there. And I'm brushing through it into the uh, layer mask to reveal this lightning effect only in those areas which the luminosity selection is allowing this brush to, uh, to take effect. So if you're watching this video on YouTube with the comments below, then let me know if you enjoyed this video and if you're ready to start trying some of these tips out in your own workflow by adding a comment right now. And if you want to be notified by YouTube when I publish new videos, then make sure you click on the subscribe button in the bottom corner of this video as well. So with that said, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time.